Vielleicht, ladies and gentlemen, I was born in the beautiful city of Vienna. But my early life in Vienna, whilst I was still a child, was less than beautiful. For I had to learn the terrible lesson of racial and religious persecution. It's a long time ago, but time can never ever be a healer. In fact, as the years pass by, those terrible long-distance events become clearer and more vivid in my memory. How can I possibly forget that day in July 1939? I was not yet 11 years of age when my mother and sister took me to the main station in Vienna, the Westbahnhof, for my long and momentous journey to England. I was a little bit confused why I was going. I was a little bit determined to be a grown man and not to cry, which was just as well because the station loudspeaker announced that there would be no passionate or sentimental farewells. What that meant was we were not supposed to cry. How can you possibly tell a child of 11 years of age not to cry, going away for the very first time from home? How can you expect a parent not to cry, knowing fully well that they might never see a child again. I put on a brave face. We men, I was 11 years of age, quite a man. We don't cry, girls cry, but we men don't cry. I missed very much that last cuddle I could have had with my mother had I not been such a cruel man. My mother turned her back on me because she knew that if I was to see her weak, I wouldn't be such a big man after all. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I remember this so vividly. The Westbahnhof, 1939, one week before my 11th birthday. But you noticed I haven't talked about my father. My father wasn't there. My father was no longer with us. And here I've got to go back to the November 1938, the terrible events of the Crystal Night. This is something I will never ever forget. And nobody will explain to me the terrible things that happened. I couldn't quite understand what is happening. When you're that young, you get confused. You can't be sure. You know there are a lot of bad men, but why? That's difficult to explain to a 10-year-old. So that's all I was in 1938. And I remember in the middle of the night, yes, in the middle of the night, a band of young Hitler youths barge into our small, modest apartment. But that was no order, because the man who led these young hooligans was a man I knew was Uncle Kurt, a man who was not only our neighbour, but who was my father's colleague, comrade in the First World War. Kurt Kovac, that was his name, and my father shared the same trenches in the Austrian Imperial Army on the Italian front. They became great friends because both were born in what today is the Czech Republic, but in those days part of Austria. I called him Uncle Kurt. I looked with amazement, for there he was no longer the kindly uncle who had taken me to my first football match. Here was a man in a brown shirt 
with a swastika armband and I heard him distinctly say, oh gosh, as I talk about it, I can hear it again. Donik de Jude, that's where the Jew is lying. He never took my father. <coughs> In the first instance, they took him to the infamous concentration camp Dachau. But they soon found that they needed labor to build the motorways. For some of the motorways in the eastern part of the country were not built by trade union labor. They were built by people like my father. Labor was very, very cheap. No, I never saw my father again. My sister and my mother saw him again, but I didn't. I was already in England. And so, from that moment onwards, Jews had no civil rights, but they had no rights as human beings either. Anybody could do whatever they want. And you know, it's amazing that these memories magnify themselves as the years pass by. They just don't fade. They can't fade. And I won't allow them to fade. Not in a sense of hatred, for that's negative, but knowing fully well that there'll come a time, who knows when, when there won't be many witnesses left, where we're all in our 80s, some of us in our 90s. There'll come a time when there won't be any witnesses. There'll be books, there'll be DVDs, there'll be all sorts of things. But there won't be a personal description of those bitter and terrible years. And so there we were at the station. And soon the announcement came that the children would be allowed to go to the platform, but unaccompanied. I had a sister, a lovely sister. She was seven years older than I. Her name was Adele. We called her Daly. Somehow Daly managed to get onto the platform. I suppose a good-looking young woman might have had her ways. And I was with my cousin. There were two of us. And I was lucky. I had a seat by the window. And I could hear Daly shout as the train moved slowly out of Vienna. Otto is a schön brav, wir sehen uns bald wieder. Be a good boy, we'll see each other again shortly. She must have known, she was seven years older than I. She understood the ways of the world better than I did, that we were never to see each other again. Now Vienna isn't a big city, not like London or Paris. Soon, as the train moved out of the station, we left the city behind, open country. And here is rather amazing, I don't understand this. I remember so many things in detail, vividly, but I can't remember the journey. I was exhausted, I was confused. I still didn't quite know why I was going, but I was already one of the older children. There was one little girl, I witnessed that, six years of age. She thought she was being sent away by her parents because she was naughty. And she pleaded with her parents, I do the cleaning, I do the shopping. She couldn't have known that she was sent to safety like myself. And often I thank the Almighty that I, my mother had the foresight to send me away. And this is a good opportunity for us to be positive. To be positive about the many thanks we got for people. I will always thank my mother. My father didn't know much about it. I don't know how they treated him in Dachau. Not very well, I don't suppose. But it was my mother who each morning 
early in the morning, queued outside what we knew as the Kultusgemeinde, the Jewish community offices, to see whether in the last moment she could get me onto the children's transport. And she succeeded only two days before. She succeeded, and I vividly remember her coming to me early in the morning. She had no sleep. She was queuing up since the early morning. Otto, you're going to England. England! I was absolutely thrilled. I knew that England was an island. We didn't know much about Scotland and Wales. I knew that England was an island. I was going to see the sea. In Vienna, there is no sea. In Austria, there's no sea. Oh, we've got many lakes, beautiful lakes, but no sea. England. But when are we going? No, Otto. Not we, but you. I have a photograph. Perhaps I can show it to you afterwards. I've got it here which was taken the day before we left. My sister, Dele, was fortunate. She had some sort of job, with some sort of pittance as wages. And she decided that we must have a farewell memento of the occasion of me leaving. You know, it's amazing how these things come back to me when I talk about and so it was that the Vespernhof was the last time I saw the, three, the two of my loved parents, of mother and sister. But my thoughts were with my father. My father was my friend. My father was a distinguished soldier for Austria. He received a decoration from a representative of the Emperor. Remember, 1914-1918, Austria was still a very large nation, a large but rather diverse empire. And he and Mr. Shushin, Mr. Kovac, were like so many of them, unemployed. Each morning they would go to see if they could find work. The 10th district of Austria was not a Jewish district. Vienna had one of the most densely populated Jewish population in, not only in Austria, but in Europe, I would think. But not where we lived. There was a very small community but a very close-knit community, possibly because they were so small. And Kurt, or as I called him, Uncle Kurt, and his wife, Tante Maria, they were not only our neighbors, but they were our friends. They had a boy, six months younger than myself, Kurt Jr. It was natural that we were friends. We lived in the same council building. And the fact that they were Catholics and we were Jews didn't really come up in conversation. Why should it? In fact, for us children, it was good. We had the best, best of both worlds. For when Christians have Christmas, around about the same time, we have the Festival of Light, which we call Hanukkah. And Kurt would come into our small, little, modest apartment to see the menorah lit. And there was always a donut for him, as indeed for me. And likewise, I would see Father Christmas. I would see the candles being lit <coughs> on the Christmas tree. For us children, that was marvelous. We had to cake and eat it, literally. And it all came to a sudden end. 